What's going on guys? Jacob here back with another video. Hope you're having an awesome day. We're going to be going over the final video in our print on demand design best practices series for Merch by Amazon, Etsy, and Redbubble. So if you're interested in learning how to create winning designs that stand out in search results, and you're interested on some of the things that you maybe shouldn't do so that you save yourself time in the long run, then stick around to the very end of this video. And I'm also going to tell you about the Photoshop clone that um, I use to create my designs. So the very first thing that you should do is test ugly t-shirt designs. This doesn't have to be your main style of designing, but check out how these look kind of ugly, but um, you know, they seem to be selling very well. So if this is something that you haven't tried yet, I would recommend creating some ugly designs. I think for some reason they stand out in search results and it's something that you can try out for your print on demand business, whether you're on Amazon or whether you're on Etsy, um, it's a good strategy to try. So take some notes. This one on the left here is just all text and it's, um, it's two or three different fonts stacked up in different sizes. Our first don't, don't overcomplicate the process. When it comes to selling t-shirts on Amazon and Etsy, because there's, there's different fundamentals when it comes to shine on and selling print on demand jewelry and selling print on demand metal art, which I highly recommend in my other videos. But when it comes to selling t-shirts on Amazon and Etsy, ideally, unless you are an artist capable of creating really intricate art and you're spending a lot of time creating that art and, it, and it's a very unique finalized piece, you should only be spending about 10 to 20 minutes on your design. So the only reason I included the first part about artists is because I do know there are some digital artists that do create all their graphics themselves and that's fantastic and it might take you longer than 20 minutes to do that. But for everyone else that's not a designer, that's not an artist, including myself, I'm not a naturally born graphic designer by any means. So I try to aim for 10 to 20 minutes per design, anything beyond that, and it starts to not be worth the investment. You need to be able to test designs quickly. You need to be able to have a simple process that you can follow, not a complicated process um, that's gonna hold you back. So some ways that you can design faster without sacrificing your quality or sales, you can do text-based designs. So don't even include any graphics, just do text. You can do pre-made graphics from Canva, Place It, Creative Market. There are tons of other marketplaces and other ways that you can get pre-made graphics. You can also hire a contractor to design artwork for you. So if you have a very specific design in mind, then you can find someone on Fiverr or find someone on Upwork that can create those designs for you. Once you start scaling up, you can even have someone join your design team um, as an independent contractor, but they can help you create designs weekly. And that way you um, have a professional on your team. Um, you can also use royalty free graphics. You can collect those from raw pixel, for example. Um, these are all graphics that are really well made and they are copyright free creative commons use. So you can use those for anything that you're doing. And finally, save your Photoshop templates of your designs for future use. Guys, this is going to save you a lot of time. Essentially, whenever you find that you have a t-shirt that's a winner and it's getting sales, you can go back to your template and create new designs around um, your, your, what's working for you. So if something's working for you, go back into your Photoshop template and change some things about it. Change the font, change the colors, change the graphics, the designs. And what this does is it saves you even more time and ensures that you're not overcomplicating things beyond what they need to be. And our second do is get creative and have fun. So I hope that you guys are having fun throughout this whole process. I know that it can be a little stressful, a little intimidating at first, but the more fun that you have and the more creative that you get with your designs, the more likely you are to create something that stands out in the marketplace that isn't like anything else that other people are creating. Um, so that sounds like a lot. That sounds like I'm asking you to create, you know, the next Mona Lisa and <laughs> try and captivate people. I'm not. I'm essentially just saying what everyone else in the print on demand space is telling you to do is take winning designs and slightly alter them and upload those. I don't recommend that. I think you should use these designs as inspiration and with, with how competitive things are on Merch by Amazon and with Etsy, I think you need to add your own creative spin, your own fun little twist on these designs. So try to find inspiration outside of Amazon and get creative, play, it's fun guys. Offer something amazing to the world. So moving on to our next don't, don't give up. If you really want to make e-commerce and print on demand work for you, then you have to take massive action and not be discouraged if there aren't immediate results. And again, I'm going to make the disclaimer, you know, if you try print on demand and you know, you decide that it's not for you, then that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. If you don't enjoy it, if you're not having fun, as we were just discussing, if it's a chore and you just, you just really aren't enjoying yourself, then 
by all means, there are other ways to generate income online. But what I'm trying to say is if this is what, you know, if you're having fun with it, you're just not seeing the sales and the success that you want to see yet, don't give up. Um, you know, the growth mindset is I'm learning new skills and I'm creating a long-term passive income stream for myself and my family. I can eventually expand my e-commerce business with paid advertising and a Shopify brand. And even when I fail, I'm getting one step closer to success. Obviously, the growth mindset might sound a little bit different for you, but guys, whenever I first started with e-commerce and I decided that I probably wouldn't see success right away, but I would stick with it because I would be learning valuable skills and I would be building something over time, a long-term passive income stream for myself. And by seeing others succeed with print on demand and, and e-commerce, it gave me the motivation to keep moving forward. The fixed mindset is I tried a few times and it didn't work. I don't know how to do something, so I won't try. Um, you know, I'm not going to take action because I don't know how to do something. I hear that a lot. And then, you know, there's nothing new for me to learn, no new experiments to try. When I fail, it means I should give up. So you can kind of see the difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset here. Um, obviously, the growth mindset is focused on getting better and learning and understanding that failure is part of the process, whereas the fixed mindset believes that they are limited in some way, that they will always have a barrier and a wall in front of them that they cannot break through. And the difference between these two mindsets is often what creates um, you know, a success or failure. So I really encourage you going forward to carry a growth mindset if you want to succeed with e-commerce. You know, Literally have the mindset that anything could happen today or tomorrow. My customers are abundant and growing every single day. You know, consistently showing up and giving your 1% better every single day is going to make a huge difference by the end of the year, by the end of five years. As Tony Robbins often says, we overestimate how much we can accomplish in a year and we underestimate how much we can accomplish in five years. So guys, if you wanna learn more about growth mindset and fixed mindset, this actually comes from a book by Carol Dweck. So be sure to check out that book. Let's move on. As promised, here's our bonus tip. This tool is what I actually use to create all of my designs. It is called Photopea and it is essentially a Photoshop clone. So let's go check it out really quickly. So here I am inside of Photopea, and as you'll notice, I'm inside my web browser, so you don't need to download anything to do this. And as you'll see, it looks very familiar to Photoshop. On the right-hand side, there's a layers panel. On the left-hand side, you have all of your selection tools. And guys, if you aren't familiar with Photopea, let me know in the comments. I can definitely create a tutorial on how I like to design within Photopea. All right, guys, that concludes this video, and it also concludes our print-on-demand design best fundamentals series. I hope you got a lot of value from it. Leave a like. Leave a comment below with any questions that you have. I'm going to leave a link to Photopea as well. And guys, if you would like to check out our next series, be sure to subscribe. We're going to be talking about how you can set up a Shopify store and how you can integrate Shine On print on demand jewelry so that you can start selling high profit products like jewelry and metal art. We're going to be going from start to finish, longer length videos, and I'm so excited to tell you guys everything I know about Shine On and Shopify. So be sure to subscribe, like, and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Until next time, guys, as always, have an amazing day and create something awesome.